Hold on, Caro, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Wow, lovely oh, mangoes. Look at that. These are lovely. I want that one. Which one? That yellow looking one. That one looks succulent. It's ah, big. It's just the right one. That for me. big one there? Tony, get okay, okay. Stand back. Okay. I've done this before. Please. Not the first time I'm climbing trees. Tony, push. Come here, you. Your hands are short. Come ah, here. Get it. Caro, huh? I'm stuck. Oh. <laughs> what is this now? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Welcome to Shamba Shepa. This week we are in Wate, Makueni County. Majina yangu naitwa Finnesend Kitugo Kimenje. Nafanya kazi ya kulima. Mimi naitwa Festus Mule, mimi ni mkulima. Festus and Vincent are very passionate farmers who managed to run the farm for Josephine. I They are young, with great ideas, and have really turned the farm around. On the Shamba, they have mangoes, oranges, maize, which they grow for grain and keep the stocks for cow feed tomatoes, and cows that they sell for beef. Hello, hello! hello. Josephine! How are you? I'm fine. Ah, how are you? How are you? Josephine, uh -huh. how is it going? How is everything? I'm going well. Everything is fine. Vincent. Yeah. All right. So how is uh, farming here, Festus? Any challenges? Because it's kind of mud. Water. Water. Yes, water. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. water is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Hey, what else, Vincent? Mugonja. Hmm? Ah. Mugonja. Oh, diseases. Yeah. So who is uh, usually here in the Shamba? Is it you or them? Those boys. Ah, these ah. two. Yeah. <laughs> Festas and Vincent. Uh -huh. Why? Why, mommy? Why? I have another job. You have another business somewhere else? I have a shop. Ah. A shop? Yeah. So you sell in the shop? Ah. So that yeah. means Caro for this particular shop mm -hmm. will be with the boys. Festus yeah. and Vincent. Mm -hmm. And yes. as Mama says, the boys. Yes. yes. So if you'll give us permission, yeah. just a few minutes, we make our tent and then we come back and do business. Yeah. Is that yes. okay? Yes. Okay, All we'll right. see you later. We'll see you soon. Yes. Okay. All right, thank All you. Right. Thank okay. You. Yes. Kuna ngombe kumi na tano. Ile majani iko pale. Inaweza na mpaka mwezi wa saba hii. On any farm, diversification is a key to protecting yourself from climate change. Cows are a good addition to the crops. Eh vile tulikuja pande ya chakula iko na shida sana. Sababu hakuna kitu inaendelea kama kitu ya kilimo. Lakini ukiingia hapa Vincent and Festus. Yeah, yes. yeah. Ah, what's going on here? Uh, now, Vincent, yeah? what do you do with the maize when it grows and, and the stalks are there? What do you do with them? Uh, 
so the, there, there are so many challenges of getting feed here for the cow, is there? Yeah, challenge iko mingi sana. Okay, now there's an expert waiting for you to tell you more about it. Yes. Shall we go meet him? Yes. Yeah. Let's go, yes. let's go. The cows on the farm are mainly for beef. They are fattened, then sold. So, weight and health are very important. Vestas explained that feeding is a big challenge with the cows. Currently, the cows are fed on the maize stalks left over after harvesting the cobs. We have brought in Mr. John Muthama, the sub-county livestock production officer. So, John, yeah. when you look at these animals here, these cows, what do you think? The animals are good and uh, it can do better if they feed it as it is recommended. When you're feeding with grasses or crops that are from the cereals, you are only giving the animals starch. But you will forget to give them uh, proteins, which is the main component which builds the body and also gives the animal the required weight. But we have so many sources of proteins. For example, we have crop residues, now from beans, asks. We also have cow peas, we also have pigeon peas and green grubs. As you look to this tree, it's an acacia and it will produce so many pods and that is a source of protein to our animal. So it's just here? Yes, it's all, here. All these, we, these proteins we here? We are standing under... Proteins. And the <laughs> proteins. <laughs> <laughs> we also them, yeah. have leukina. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, when you are doing feeding of animals, you have to include only that percent of the proteins. And also when you are including the salts, keep it aside, then you give water and lib. Let it be there always. Through water. Mm. Water yes. throughout. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then if water is here, uh, the mineral salt is here, and the feed is here, now the animal will eat, will drink water, and if it feels like taking the mineral salt, then it leaks. Okay. Beef farming in dry areas requires that you have feed stored in case of drought. Festus explained that feeding is a big challenge with the cows. Plant leftovers from maize, beans or green grams are a good source of feed. John, this is a hot place. So, yes. let's talk about diseases that affect cows here. In many of the diseases, fatigue diseases, but you can spray the animal. Because when you spray and you control the ticks, then you do away with the diseases. When it comes to spraying these cows, I can see they are very big and very huge. How do you do it, Festus? My finger. You wrestle with it? Yeah. You fight, you almost fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the solution to that? You can make a simple crash. Uh -huh. Where you'll be restraining the animal, you alone, not to cause somebody else and then you spray. It is important to have a crash for spraying and giving medication to avoid stressing or even injuring the animals. Beef cows also need proper housing, feeding and water troughs. Currently, the cows have to be tied by a rope. This is stressful as it limits their movement. They also tip over the feeders made of tires, tire rings, an old wheelbarrow, and no sight of a water trough. They definitely need a shape up. Warm areas are prone to crop pests. How does a farmer handle this constant problem? Festus? Yes. Wow! Look at those tomatoes! Yes. So is this the only place where you plant tomatoes? Or you have another place? I have another place. next week. Now let me ask you, Festus. Yes. How are you coping? I have another 
Yeah, you have challenges here and there. Yes, yes, and yes. that is exactly where I come in. Yes. I'll be back. Thank you. Okay? Please. Okay. Tomatoes are the main cash crops that Vincent and Festus grow. They face many challenges that they would like to reduce. So, we have brought in Duncan, a crop specialist, to help them with this. How long have you been planting tomatoes here? Tell us uh, what challenges are you facing? The challenge is that I am a teacher. 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 I so it is a problem that is really giving you stress. Yes, yes. Ah, Duncan. Yes. Once we see you here, we know solution is on the way. True. As usual, I know you've done your inspection and I know you have answers. Talk to us. Oh, yes. When I was doing my scouting, uh, I noted that uh, Festers need also to adopt what we call the support system for the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. To put some uh, stick just to support the tomato mm -hmm. so that it doesn't uh, contaminate with the soil because by so doing, you will get a lot of diseases. Mm -hmm. Looking at our leaves, you can see some drawing or some markings yes. caused by the most severe pest in tomato production, which is Tuta absoluta. Mm -hmm. The insect eats the leaf from inside, leaving white marks. Remember that uh, the leaves is very crucial mm. to manufacturing food okay. to continue with the continuous growth of the crop and also uh, giving the good size, that the quality and the quantity of the tomato he is looking at. Mm -hmm. From Sigenta, we have a solution for Tuta absoluta by the name of Volium Talgo. Volium Talgo is an insecticide to control uh, Tuta absoluta and a other, ma other major pests that attack the tomatoes. So for Volium, we apply at 20 mils in 20 liters of water. Okay. That is one. Two, when, uh, while still doing my scouting, I noted that uh, Festus is really facing a challenge of bright. Mm -hmm. We have late bright and early bright. Mm -hmm. So basically his leaves will just be appearing uh, brownish, mm -hmm. where you find that uh, to an extent when the severe disease spread, it can wipe out his crop, entire crop, and mm -hmm. he loses the entire crop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When water lands on the leaves of the plant, and the weather is warm, this creates an environment for fungi to grow. It is this fungi that causes blight in tomatoes. To protect and get rid of blight, mix 50 grams of Ridomil gold in 20 liters of water. To differentiate between tuta absoluta and blight, tuta has white lines on the leaf, while for blight, the leaf has spotty brown and black marks. To protect against Tuta Absoluta, mix 20 milliliters of volume Tago in 20 liters of water. To protect and get rid of blight, mix 50 grams of Ridomil Gold in 20 liters of water. When spraying, wait one to two weeks before spraying again. When it's wet, spray every week. When it's dry, spray every two weeks. When spraying, ensure you are well protected. Have a cape, goggles, mask, an overall, gloves, and gum boots. And uh, something to add on that, I'll also encourage Festas and any other farmer who is want to embark on farming to adopt what we call uh, good agricultural practices. And basically this is, means that when you're starting to farm, you have a spray program. Mm -hmm. This spray program will guide you how to do the application or to apply the product, knowing which pest and which disease you want to fight. In this case, you need to do a preventative application mm -hmm. where you are applying the product before the disease set in. A spray schedule is a timetable that you're given by an expert for every crop. It tells you when to spray and what to spray. It also shows you how long you should wait after spraying before harvesting, which is very important to protect you your family and those buying your produce. So first us, yes. prevention is better than cure. So yes. make sure you follow the right plan yes. of spraying because yes. it's always shown, yes. you know. And every time you have a question that you're not so clear about, we have yes. iShamba. For more information, get in touch with iShamba on 0711 
082606. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up weather and farming news for Kenya. In the coming weeks, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui and Makuini, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. However, the lower parts of Garissa will stand out in this region as they will be expecting up to 75 mm of total rains. Most of the coastal counties will get moderate levels of rains ranging up to 50 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. Tana River and Taita Taveta, however, will have lower total rains of below 15 mm in the week. Central Kenya counties such as Moranga, Nyeri, Nyandaro and Laikipia, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. The North, Central and South Rift Valley will also see very low rains of below 5 mm across the week. This cuts across Trukana, West Pokot, Baringo, Samburu, Bomet, Nakuru to Narok. However, Transoia, Nandi and Kericho counties will see up to 50 mm of total rains in the week. The Western and Nyanza regions will see low to moderate levels of rains ranging between 5 to 50 mm in the week. This spans across the counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga to Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri. Farmer, check your maize for armyworms and stem borers daily and control them with recommended insecticides as they damage your crops and reduce yields. If you have grasses like boma roots at the flowering stage, now is the best time to harvest and make hay. Harvest and let the grass wilt for two to three days, then build them. The cold weather comes with fungal diseases such as blight, which is common in horticulture crops, including tomatoes, beans, potatoes, capsicum, and even coffee. Scout your farm daily to spot this early and control with recommended fungicides. For more tips and detailed forecasts for your area, get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Coming up after the break, we learn more about adapting to climate change and we discover a bean variety that does well on dry areas. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. In this section, we learn about beans made for dry regions. But first, we discover more about climate change. <laughs> Understanding the changing weather patterns can be hard. But by using the weather forecast, you can save yourself from losses on your Shamba. Kupu aliyahanga ina kuanga juu zana. Joto. Ha, joto. Maji ina kuwa chache na mimea inaanza kuharibika. Pua ina kuwa kiasi tu. Vincent. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Ah, what is happening here? And drips. Drips. Yeah. What are you planting? Yeah, ni kuvanda mahindi tu. So you're using drip lines yeah. to plant maize. Yeah. And do you plant other crops in the shamba using the drip? No. Just maize? Yeah, right. Ah, wow, that's amazing. Mm. But there's something I really need to understand. Mm. I'll be right back, okay? Yeah. All right, you continue. Yeah. Mm. Understanding climate change and how to adapt is important for every farmer. That is why we have called in Paul Morage from the Kenya Meteorological Department. So Vincent, when I came down uh, to the Shamba, mm -hmm. you were very busy. Yeah. Uh, what were you doing? I was doing drifts. in drifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what, what, what is it for? I was doing it for my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where, where do you get the water? Because this area is so hot, Morage. Right. It is hot. We have to use the machine. We have to use the pipe. We have to use the Shamba. We have to use the Shamba to use the drip. We have to use the that is amazing. You know, Vincent Avestas, congratulations. Mm. Okay. Very rarely you find young farmers with that passion. Yes. It's called passion. Mm. And in a very dry place like this one, mm. it's so commendable. One of the few things I observe yes. is that despite being in a very arid and a dry place, they are managed now mm -hmm. to have a crop in the farm at this particular time of the year. Mm -hmm. 
So the timing was very important. So that when the rains come, the crop will be at another stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then they will stop pumping the water. And the way they have done the leaches and planting on top of the air, mm -hmm. the water will accumulate yes. and then it will percolate. And they, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, that timing is very important. One, it reduces the, the, the cost of pumping. Mm -hmm. Two, you will have a market because no one will be having the green maize in the farm. Mm -hmm. yes. You can make use of irrigation well through timing. Start off your crop early in the season through irrigation. As the little rains come, they help the crop mature and produce early. Meaning, you can sell in the market before everyone. I would wish because right now we want to transit to agribusiness. Yes. You sell the maize when it is green. Yeah. Maize on irrigation is not so much sustainable except if you are to sell it at green stage. When you say green stage, you mean sell it when... It yes, for long the boiled maize. boiled maize, and you know there is never enough. Yes. It's never enough. Mm. Yeah. So you have a market. And because we are young men, and you are serving even with your phones, don't wait for the buyers to come here. Mm -hmm. Go and look for the market. Mm. Yeah. I have observed you have livestock. So the left to open the maize stock, you prepare silage, which is highly nutritious at that particular stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. The following day, because you have water, plant something else. Green maize is maize that is harvested when still a bit milky. When you harvest green maize, it means you get a better price. You can use the green fodder to make silage and you can plant another crop sooner. Even the tomatoes you are saying they are having a challenge of the market, I would wish also use taga. Mm -hmm. Say that every time you are having something you are selling. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing you have done well that I so commend you mm -hmm. is you have introduced fruit trees in your farm. Yes. Yeah. One, it cautions you against when you have a crop failure, you are selling the fruits. Mm -hmm. It is also increasing the forest cover. And also it reduces weed erosion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Lastly, while we are here from the Kenya Meteorological Department at the Aishaba, you'll have now a focus in your farm. Mm -hmm. Because you'll you're be digital. Receiving, yeah. Because you are digital. Yeah. Yes. So I commend you. Be climate resilient, use the weather forecast. Yes. yes. The shape up is going on. Kamau needs to finish the new holding and feeding pen for the cows. Some farmers in dry regions use irrigation as a form of growing their crops. But can they grow dry land crops even when they irrigate? Hapa challenge iko ya maji nikakaa chini na boss kamwambia tuweke drip. Tuangalie kama hii shamba kama itabadilika. Vincent and Festus. Yes. yes. There you are. Yes. So what are you planting? Maragwe. Mm. What did you plant last season? Maragwe. Uh -huh. You continue the good work as I finish my tea and look for an expert yes. and then you can join us later. Okay? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Good, okay. good. Thank you. Even though Vincent and Festers irrigate their farm, they still face challenges like any dryland farmers. That is why we have brought in Boaz Waswa from SIAT, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, to help our farmers. In these particular dry areas, there are several methods that you can use to conserve the little water. Using drip irrigation is one way of making sure that you only supply water at the plant root. And therefore you use very little amount of water and your crop is able to grow. Mm -hmm. One thing that you notice in this area of Makweni, you realize that farmers grow oranges and trees within their farm. And so for those spaces, you are able to grow beans within the spaces that are between trees. That is a way of utilizing the extra spaces that there is. But you can also do arrangement of beans and maize or any other cereal on your farm in in a way that you're able to grow a row of maize and a row of beans, a row of maize and a row of beans, or a row of beans and a row of sorghum. And that way, 
you are able to have two harvests or two crops from the same piece of land. Why is a bean crop important when it comes to crop rotation or when it comes to the land? Beans is a very important crop because you can grow it together with a lot of other cereals. It's able to tolerate the shed under many of the other crops. Secondly, when you grow beans within the farm, you are able to improve soil fertility because they fix their own nitrogen. And also, as they drop their leaves, the leaves are able to improve soil organic matter. Also, when you grow the first growing beans, you are able to have your food much earlier. So Festus, yeah. what kind of beans did you grow? Yellow. Yellow beans. beans. Yellow bean is one of the beans that can be grown in this area because it was researched for this dryland area. We developed another variety that is equally drought tolerant and also very good for this particular region. That variety is called Nyota. Nyota? Nyota. Have you ever heard of Nyota? Uh -huh. You don't no. know Nyota? No, no, no. What does it look like? Like, like Nyota. Yeah. It's important for you to get your seed from certified dealers. Then the other things that you need to do is to make sure you control for pests and diseases all through the season. Now, Nyota bean, the research that we've had, and especially when grown in the dryland areas, yeah. takes about 70 days to maturity. In terms of harvest, uh, Nyota can give you yield of 8 to 12 bags. Yeah. depending on management, depending on how you take care of your bean. Growing dry area seeds ensures that you make use of the little rain available. Nyota beans will give you 8 to 12 bags of 90 kilos per acre when managed well. Mm -hmm. And so when you practice um, bean production under drip irrigation, you need to be careful so that at the end of it, after the pod formation, you reduce the water gradually to allow the beans to start drying. Mm. If you continue watering, they will continue looking green and take longer to dry. So, remember farmers, when using irrigation, dry area crops produce much more. Remember, when the bean pods are fully grown, start to gradually reduce the water you give the plants until you cut off supply to allow them to dry. Nyota beans mature faster and irrigating for beans means you'll have beans when other farmers do not have any and the prices are better. More money in your pocket. Okay, come on in our farmers. Okay, what do you think of this cartoshare? The cow pen is done. From an empty space, to a wonderful enclosure. From cut tires, tire rims, and an old wheelbarrow to proper feeding and water troughs. The cows now have a proper crash for spraying and giving medicine. No more tired legs. As you can see now, your cows will be having lots of places to drink their water. Drinking uh, water for him? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, our farmers, yeah. Shamba Shepap has been with you uh, together with the experts. And we want to know what you think about Shamba Shepa. Mm -hmm. Josephine, are you happy with us being here? Yes, I am happy. Ah, <laughs> let me see. Vincent, are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Are you happy? Cows are happy. <laughs> Farmers are happy. Yes, I am happy too. How about you, Carol? I'm extremely happy. And I hope our viewers are happy. So yeah. let's tell them goodbye. Bye. <laughs>